Danger Dolan. From clever quips to renouncements of faith, we count the incredible dying words of 40 people. Number 40. Sir Winston Churchill was a celebrated writer and politician who twice served as the UK's Prime Minister. He died in 1965 with his health deteriorating after a stroke. Seems he was ready to go though since his last words were, I'm bored with it all. Number 39. Pancho Villa was a Mexican political leader and Viva la Revolutionist. In 1923, he was gunned down in his vehicle during a banking trip to Peral. His dying words were, don't let it end like this. Tell them I said something. Number 38. Emily Dickinson was a celebrated American poet who lived a life of seclusion. She died in 1886 after being bedridden for months. Her last words were, I must go in for the fog is rising. Her many cats purred in acknowledgement. Number 37. Carl Panzram was an American serial killer, rapist, arsonist, and burglar who was sentenced to execution in 1930. With his final words, Panzerum chose to mock his executioner. Hurry it up, you who's your bastard. I could hang a dozen men while you're screwing around. Number 36. Bessie Smith was a popular American blues singer. During her run, she influenced many jazz vocalists and earned the nickname the Empress of the Blues. Bessie died affirming her devotion to the big man upstairs. I'm going, she said, but I'm going in the name of the Lord. Number 35. Joan Crawford was an Oscar-winning American film and television actress. Apparently, she was not on speaking terms with her maker, as she reportedly died in 1977 while yelling at her praying housekeeper. Her final words were, Damn it, don't you dare ask God to help me. Number 34. Wilson Misner was a famous raconteur, entrepreneur, and successful playwright. He died in 1933. While Misner was on his deathbed, an attending priest said, I'm sure you want to talk to me. To which Risner replied, Why should I talk to you? I've just been talking to your boss. Number 33. Oscar Odd McIntyre was a famed American newspaper columnist who died in 1938, aged 53. His last words were said to his wife, Maybell. Snooks, will you please turn this way? I like to look at your face. Number 32. Ethan Allen was an American Revolutionary War patriot and politician. He died in 1789, hours after suffering an apoplectic fit during a routine business trip. An attending physician attempted to comfort him, saying, General, I fear the angels are waiting for you. Waiting, are they? Allen replied. Well, let him wait. Number 31. Charlie Chaplin was a legendary comic actor and silent film star who died in bed in 1977. An attending priest said, May the Lord have mercy in your soul. To which he replied, Why not? After all, it belongs to him. Number 30. Pulitzer Prize winning playwright Eugene O'Neill was born in the Broadway Hotel. He died at age 65 in a Boston hotel and acknowledged this peculiarity with the following dying words. I knew it. I knew it. Born in a hotel room and god damn it, dying in a hotel room. Number 29. Johnny Ace was an American R&B singer who released a string of hit singles in the 1950s. He died in 1954 of a self-inflicted gun wound during one of his concerts. His last words were, I'll show you, it won't shoot. Number 28. This woman with a ridiculous name that I will now butcher, Louis-Marie Therese de Saint-Maurice Comtesse de Vassilis's dying wish was to be free of the confines of being a lady. She let one rip while dying, then said good. A woman who can fart is not dead. Number 27. Jimmy L. Glass was a convicted murderer who was sentenced to die by electrocution on June 12, 1987 in Louisiana. After a failed escape attempt, Glass uttered these smart alecky last words while seated on an electric chair. I'd rather be fishing. Number 26. Vladimir Lenin was a Russian communist revolutionary, politician, and political theorist. It's thought the cause of Lenin's death was syphilis. His last words were, Good dog which he said to a dog that had brought him a dead bird. Number 25. Leonardo da Vinci was a hugely influential 15th century artist who died in 1519. Despite painting the legendary Mona Lisa, da Vinci did not think too highly of his own abilities. His dying words were, I have offended God and mankind because my work did not reach the quality it should have. Number 24. Jessica Dubroff was a seven-year-old pilot whose final words, Do you hear the rain? Do you hear the rain? were uttered over the phone to her mother. 
as she ran her own single engine propeller aircraft somewhere in Cheney, USA. The plane had suffered an engine breakdown seconds after takeoff. On that fateful morning in 1996, the young pilot, her father, and her instructor died on board. Number 23, Mary Elizabeth Jenkins Surratt was the first woman to be executed by the military tribunal of the federal government of the United States. She was found to be involved in an assassination conspiracy against the late US President Abraham Lincoln and uttered these last words during her 1865 public execution. Please don't let me fall. Number 22. Jane Dornacker was an American actress and rock musician. In 1986, she was given a live traffic report for a national radio station where a helicopter plunged into the Hudson River. Her listeners heard her say, hit the water, hit the water, hit the water, before a loud crash signaled the celebrity's instantaneous death. Number 21. Belinda Emmett was an Australian actress and singer and the first wife of popular TV presenter Rove McManus. She was a breast cancer sufferer and had her last conversation with her sister while suffering severe stroke-like symptoms. Seeing that her sister was weeping beside her, Emma asked, are you alright? Number 20. Joan Crawford enjoyed a career as a highly regarded movie actress until being diagnosed with cancer in her 70s. She had been bedridden for years and had refused to seek medical care for herself. In May 1977, the nurses who took care of her realized she was already dying and offered a soft prayer. The movie star saw them praying and said these dying words, Don't you dare ask God to help me. Number 19. Richard B. Mellon was the multimillionaire president of Alcoa. He and his brother had an interesting family ritual. They'd been playing tag for seven decades. When Richard was on his deathbed, he called his brother over and whispered, Last tag. Andrew remained it for four years until he also died. Number 18. Julian was a Roman emperor and Constantine descendant who died during the Battle of Samara and Maranga while trying to quash the original endorsement to Christianity of the Roman Empire. His dying words said during the heat of battle were, you have won, O Galilean. Number 17. Donald O'Connor was a singer, dancer, and actor, and hosted the Academy Awards in 1954. He died at age 78 with his family gathered around him. Before passing, he joked, I'd like to thank the Academy for my Lifetime Achievement Award that I will eventually get. And he still hasn't gotten one. Number 16. At the peak of the French Revolution, Queen Marie Antoinette was convicted of treason and sentenced to die by guillotine with her husband, King Louis XVI of France. Riding a cart, she was taken through the streets of Paris and mocked until she and King Louis XVI were finally brought to the guillotine site. While she was already on the scaffold seconds before her death, she unintentionally stepped on the foot of her executioner and decorously uttered these words of pardon. Pardon me, sir, I did not do it on purpose. Number 15. Humphrey Bogart was a distinguished Hollywood actor whose health deteriorated when he was diagnosed with a malignancy in his esophagus sometime in 1956. On his deathbed, he called his wife and children in to bid them goodbye and uttered these witty last words. I should never have switched from scotch to martinis. Number 14. Louisa May Alcott was an American novelist who suffered from an unknown illness. On her deathbed, she uttered, Is it not meningitis? Believing this to be the cause of her illness. When she died, the cause of death was discovered to be mercury poisoning, which she acquired years earlier while being treated for typhoid fever. Number 13. Eric Arthur Blair, better known by his pen name George Orwell, was the famed English writer of 1984 and Animal Farm. He died of a burst artery in 1950. While his last spoken words are unknown, his last written words were, at 50, everyone has the face he deserves. Number 12. Alistair Crowley was an English writer, occultist, and ceremonial magician. He founded the religion and philosophy Thelema and was the group's self-identified and totally legitimate prophet. In 1947, he died in the throes of a heroin addiction, proclaiming these drug-induced final words, I am perplexed, Satan, get out. Number 11. Major John Andre was a British army officer who was hanged as a spy by the Continental Army during the American Revolution. Moments before he was hanged, Andre pronounced these last words, I pray you to bear me witness that I meet my fate like a brave man. 
Number 10. Thomas J. Grasso was convicted of murdering two elderly citizens. His eventual sentence was death by lethal injection, and his dying words were spent complaining about his last meal. I did not get my spaghettios, he said. I got spaghetti. I want the press to know this. Number 9. Sir James Matthew Barry was a famed Scottish author of Peter Pan. He died of pneumonia in 1937 on the top floor of London's Adafi Terrace House. His final tragic words were, I can't sleep. Number 8. Ernest Hemingway was a hard-drinking, influential American writer. He was diagnosed in 1961 with a genetic disease, hemochromatosis, which caused mental and physical deterioration, ultimately leading him to commit suicide that same year. His final words were spoken to his wife, Mary. They were, Good night, my kitten. Number seven. John F. Kennedy was the much-loved 35th president of the United States. He was murdered in 1963, one of the history's most contentious assassination plots. JFK's last words were, No, you certainly can't, which he said in response to a remark made by the wife of then-governor John Connolly. You certainly cannot say that the people of Dallas haven't given you a nice welcome, Mr. President. Number six. Charles Gussman was a writer and TV announcer. He wrote a number of successful radio serials in the pilot episode of Days of Our Lives. He died of failing at age 87. In his final moments, his daughter reminded him of his wish to depart with memorable last words. Gusman gently removed his oxygen mask and whispered, and now for a final word from our sponsor. Number five. Thomas B. Morin was a pickpocket known by the name Butterfingers because he could slide in and out of a pocket like pure butter. In his lifetime, Morin reportedly stole as many as 50,000 wallets. He died in Miami in 1971. His last words were, I've never forgiven that smart alecky reporter who named me Butterfingers. To me, it's not funny. Number four. Alfred Hitchcock was one of the most influential filmmakers of all time. He died of renal failure at age 80 in his Bel Air home. Hitchcock rejected the offer for a priest. His dying words were, one never knows the ending. One has to die to know exactly what happens after death, although Catholics have their hopes. Number three. Jack Sue was an actor on the TV series Barney Miller. The series featured a running gag where Sue's character made crappy coffee. Sue himself went on to develop cancer of the esophagus. When he was wheeled into the operating room, he joked to a co-star that it must have been the coffee. In a tribute episode, cast members raised their coffee cups to Sue's memory. Number two. Elvis Presley was a film star and rock music icon. He was plagued with health problems in his later life, which, coupled with a punishing tour schedule and addiction to prescription medication, led to his premature death in 1977 at age 42. During a sleepless night, Presley told his wife that he was going to the bathroom to read. It's possible he meant the big bathroom in the sky. Number one. One of the greatest warriors of all time, Alexander the Great, was asked moments before his death who he thought should succeed him as commander of his empire. It was an inappropriate question as Alexander the Great had no heir. With his barely audible voice, the great fighter uttered these final words to the strongest. That's it for this countdown. And have a go!